Welcome to today's episode of the Tafra channel. Ever lay awake at night pondering why we can't just print more money to solve all our financial woes? Let's face it, the thought has crossed our minds, hasn't it? We often assume that if a country simply printed more money, it would automatically become wealthier. That the solution to poverty, debt and economic crisis is just a printing press away. But is it really that easy? If it were, wouldn't every country be doing it? Let's delve into this intriguing question. Money, it's not just paper and ink. There's a whole science behind it. Now, when we think of money printing, we often picture a massive machine spitting out stacks of crisp, newly minted bills. But the reality is a bit more complex than that. You see, the process of creating money involves more than just the physical act of printing. Central banks, like the Federal Reserve in the United States or the Bank of England, are chiefly responsible for this process. These institutions have the authority to issue currency. But it's not as simple as firing up the presses whenever they feel like it. Money creation is a carefully controlled process. Central banks can't just conjure up money whenever they need it. Instead, they follow a set of guidelines and policies that dictate when and how much money to create. These rules are designed to maintain economic stability and prevent things like runaway inflation. But here's a twist. Not all money is physical. In fact, a significant portion of the money in circulation today exists only in digital form. So when we talk about printing money, we're not just talking about physical bills and coins. We're also talking about digital money created electronically at the click of a button. Central banks create this digital money in a process called open market operations. They buy government securities like bonds from banks. The payment for these securities is made with new digital money, which is then added to the bank's reserves. This increases the amount of money in the economy, but it's done in a controlled way to ensure the economy doesn't overheat. So you see, the process of money creation is a bit like a magic trick. It's not about pulling rabbits out of hats, but about carefully balancing the needs of the economy with the amount of money in circulation. And remember, while it may sound tempting to just print more money when times get tough, doing so without careful consideration can lead to serious economic consequences. So, money isn't just created out of thin air. There's a careful calculation behind it. But what happens if we go all out and print a lot more money? Well, we've now arrived at a rather gnarly monster lurking in the shadows of our financial world. Inflation. You see, inflation is a bit like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's not always bad, and a little bit can even be good, but too much. That's where the trouble begins. Let's imagine a world where we've got our hands on the printing press and we're churning out money like there's no tomorrow. Sounds fantastic, right? Well, not quite. You see, money is a bit like any other commodity. It's subject to the laws of supply and demand. So, let's say we double the amount of money in circulation. We've now got twice as much cash but the same amount of goods and services. The value of each unit of money drops because there's more of it around. This is the concept of inflation, when the general level of prices for goods and services rises and the purchasing power of money falls. Think of it like this. You're at an auction and you've got $100 to bid on a vintage comic book. Now imagine everyone else in the room also has $100. The price of that comic book will rise because there's more money chasing the same product. That's inflation in a nutshell. But why is it a problem? Well, if prices rise faster than wages, it reduces the purchasing power of money. This means people can buy less with their money, leading to a lower standard of living. It's like running on a treadmill that's constantly speeding up. You're working harder and harder, but not getting any further. So, when it comes to printing money, it's not as simple as it seems. We need to strike a balance. A balance between enough money to stimulate the economy and not so much that it causes inflation. It's a delicate dance, and one that requires careful management. In short, too much money chasing too few goods equals inflation. Scene script. Think inflation is just a hypothetical scenario? Think again. 
Let's take a trip back in time and visit Zimbabwe in the late 2000s. The country was facing a severe economic crisis and their solution to print more money. The result was catastrophic. At its peak, Zimbabwe's inflation rate reached an almost incomprehensible 89.7 sextillion percent per month. That's a one with 21 zeros after it, in case you were wondering. Prices doubled every 24 hours and the Zimbabwean dollar became virtually worthless. People were literally using wheelbarrows full of cash to buy bread. Now let's hop over to Germany just after World War I. The nation was burdened with enormous war reparations it couldn't afford and so the government decided to print more money to meet their obligations. You can probably guess what happened next. By November 1923, prices were doubling every three to four days. A loaf of bread, which cost one mark at the beginning of 1922, cost a staggering 200 billion marks by the end of 1923. The German mark was as good as wallpaper. These examples aren't just tales from the past, they're stark reminders of the chaos that can ensue when a nation prints more money than it can back with real value. As you can see, printing more money isn't the magic solution it first appears to be. So, why don't we just print more money? You might be wondering. Well, it's not as straightforward as it seems. Over the course of this video, we've unraveled the mysteries of money printing and the potential consequences that can arise from it. Remember when we mentioned the basics of money printing. It's not just about adding more zeros to your bank account. It's about the balance between supply and demand, the value of goods and services, and the overall health of the economy. We then delved into the monster called inflation, a beast that can rear its ugly head when too much money is printed. We've seen how this can lead to economic instability, eroding the value of hard-earned savings and causing prices to skyrocket. The case studies of hyperinflation further emphasized this point. They served as cautionary tales, reminding us that the simple act of printing money can have complex and far-reaching consequences. Next time you wish for more money to fall from the sky, remember, it's not as simple as it sounds. Life. So if you found this episode helpful, if it inspired you or gave you a new perspective, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. Give this video a like, share it with your friends and stay tuned for more episodes. Your engagement really helps us to keep creating content that can inspire and empower you. And as we conclude this episode, let's not forget the power of prayer. Let's pray for the strength to find our passion, the courage to pursue it, and the perseverance to overcome the suffering that comes with it. I hope you found this episode helpful. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a like because it really helps.